let's get the conversation going now, shall we? Alfred Okoligwe is with us in the studio. Alfred, it's good to have you on Sports tonight. Delighted to be here, Austin. It's another Friday and mm. uh, time to um, talk um, uh, sports. Uh, this time around, uh, like you mentioned there in your intro, the ante has been raised. We're talking about the elections mm. uh, to usher in a new executive committee for the Nigerian Football Federation. And some people are already... There are words underneath uh, attributed to the sports minister that whatever happens in Katsina um, is not known to the laws uh, of the country and uh, all of that. We we'll begin to hear, so people have their fears. Yeah. People, uh, and um, somehow football really know how to take care of itself. Uh, we've it seen... Lately, it needs FIFA <laughs> to take care of it. No, 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 what I'm saying is, uh, well, even if there are issues, you know, it, yes, it needs FIFA, but uh, the way those in the board, mm. and of course the Congress have conducted themselves since this uh, problem uh, broke out, we've not been able to see uh, the breaking of ranks, where some state chairman will say, okay, you know what? Uh, we want to pander to the other other side. Okay. Everybody just... It means that they have firm control mm. of the Congress. And the reason is not far-fetched. Those who can run for this, or those who are members of the Congress, we have definite number. The number has been the state, 37, 36 uh, states of the Federation, and the FCT, the chairman, of course, representative of coaches, clubs, are these other extras mm. significant enough to tilt the table from the chairman, I don't think it is. So it's a Congress that we know those who are going to vote. Hmm. And I think because he's sticking together like a broom, it makes them stronger. And of course, give them the, 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 the bargaining power to really want to progress with this and uh, end it all. So that's it. Uh, that's a little bit of a background into the NFF elections. It's going to be interesting. So you need to follow it carefully because... At some point, drama might just come out of it also. So you don't start asking, oh, what happened, what happened, what happened? Well, we'll get into the discussion. We'll break it down for you. We'll have the list of qualified candidates for that elections, And then we will uh, put more um, attention into it. Let's get on with the show and begin with women's basketball, the Z-Tigress. Yes, we'll keep talking about them until they get to Spain, play their first match, play the second match, play the third one. Who knows? They can go fourth, fifth. And even to the finals, that's what we want for our ladies. It's seven days to the FIBA Women's World Cup uh, that will be done in Spain. And the defending African champions, the D Tigers of Nigeria, they have affirmed uh, their readiness to take the world by surprise. Because no one will see Nigeria coming. And that's what Coach Ugly says. says, look, they will think we are just that small team from Africa. We don't have the big, tall power guards. And then they want to run over us and then we'll just shock them. D Tigers forwards at Tonye, Yingafa, and Uju Ugoka says, and there is no apprehension whatsoever in the team's camp despite facing a difficult hurdle in Group B alongside Australia, Turkey, and Argentina. So we've been, we've been hearing this girl's talk, uh, we've listened to uh, the captain, Adora, saying, look, we just want to take it one step at a time. Sarah Ugoka said the same thing. So let's listen to Atonye and Uju. They are turbo chat. They are ready to go to the World Cup and not just represent the country, but also impress. We're just ready to be on the court. We've been training in training camp for a little over two months now, so I can tell you we still have a little ways to go, but I think our team has put in the hard work uh, that is needed to go into the first uh, game against Australia. Like I said before, we're more than prepared. We're ready to take action, and we have, we've concentrated on our strengths, and that's what we're going to bring to our first game. Yeah, most of us here, we've known each other right from like playing on the 19, on the 18. So we kind of know ourselves a little bit and we've played against each other in Europe. So it's not like a, much of a difference. It's just like coming together, you know, for, for just the same goal. Just expect we, the girls, the national team, the crew, just to go there, compete, work to the game plan and just go there and execute our game and, you know, leave the rest for God. Yeah, we will do our best to be able to get to the second round. That's a goal. We, um trying to accomplish beating what um, the last group who went to the World Cup couldn't achieve. That's um, our goal. I think um, history is about to be written. You know, by faith, you know, you just, you just call for it, um, uh, your expectation, call for it. I'm, I'm actually calling for the world, the gold. I'm calling for it. Uh, and I think our team as well, we're calling for the gold, gold medal. So you just have to believe it. Believe it. Have the faith, you know. 
and just put in the work and we're going to put in the work and just um, leave everything all up on the court. Yeah. So just as we're going to do our best and leave the rest for God, Evelyn Akato says, ah, we'll do our best and leave the rest to the court. So any way you want to look at it, basketball will be played and then will give us an answer when the World Cup uh, begins right there in Spain. But, but, but our friend, let's talk about this. Um, good experience for them. We just said, look, we've played with ourselves from under 18, under 19. That's good progression. And she also mentioned that, look, experience has taught us. So going into this competition, they have a lot that they can look back on that can guide them uh, towards having a good time there. I mean, when they won the African Championship, uh, we didn't give them the chance to. We thought mm. they would just go there like uh, they did in time past. Um, the judge driver. These girls have come with bags of experience. They play in, in the U.S., play in Europe, and I think kudos should go to the um, Nigerian Basketball Federation okay. for the first time, you know, getting an organized setup mm. in terms of preparing a team properly for a major championship. These girls have had the advantage of doing that, starting from the U.S. Mm -hmm. now they came back to Nigeria, spent time here. Yeah. From here, they've headed to Turkey, mm. other intense before going for So they have experience to draw from. They have good preparations to look back to, so, okay, this is what we, what we did. Unfortunately, some of the girls that play locally have been dropped from this team, and the reason is not far fetched. Mm. You can't go to a major competition, and you're coming from a background of inactivity, Oof. as it were. You're not playing games. Uh, the league is on break, and that's why, even for the men's game, it's with, the same thing that affects the men's even game. Even with football. Gen General will come. Mm. I mean, for football. General will come. It's okay. We'll draw up a list. These guys are playing day in, day out. Mm. Your league is on break. You're not playing. So mm. the, just the rule is that those who are conditioned for playing yeah. tournament like because of, you know, activities they, they, they've had playing time and mm, rest of them mm. go for a competition like this. hopefully yeah we should be able to have enough activities happening back home so like alfred you're saying we need to bring the problem back home yeah. because on social media um followers of um women's football in the country they say we know we are taking a team to spain but no home-based players we know in kechia casually went to the last afro basket did a bit but you've just mentioned and, and, I, and i still trust that when the league is not active are, are they going to ask you that's one and then two Alfred it's another call to everyone involved we need to fix the league because Angola will not suffer this Egypt will not suffer because this but they play all of them play in their country this one we have to have get materials that have been prepared for us play in collegiate basketball play in Europe mm. and, and, and clubs around the world and I think these girls are determined for if for nothing they want to make name for themselves so uh, they've been to this championship before they got to yeah. Uh, three games. This time <laughs> around, they think um, I, 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 if they go beyond the first round, I think it will be a massive achievement for Nigerian women's basketball. It will be good. It will be good. We'll continue to monitor it. So Alfred has just tried to explain why we don't have home based players. We are not part of the technical crew. They know better and don't stay because uh, the, the coach is, is, is uh, one guy from America. No, uh, Coach Sam Amedu is also part of uh, the team. So he knows the players. So when we're not playing basketball at home, we cannot expect our players to be so good to represent the country international competition. So another call on the Federation and everyone involved with the league. We need to get busy with league basketball for the ladies back here. Let's go on this break. When we come back, we're not done. We'll go to Abuja, the nation's capital, to find out what's going on at the Under-21 Volleyball Nations Cup. So don't go anywhere. Stay.